Hey guys, so I'm here uh, to do something a little bit different today. Um, I, I'm not going to be working on a car. I, I'm not going to be wandering around the pits doing an interview, but I've come to a garage, a new garage over in Livingston. Uh, and I've got my tour guide for today. Hi, guys. How are you doing, James? Oh, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> so, where are we? We are at Raceworks in Livingston formerly known as A1 Race and Restoration, but we've rebranded to try and be cool with the kids. Cool. So, uh, there's a tooting car uh, behind that door, and there's a driver behind that door. Who's that? Aidan Moffat, our resident tooting car driver, and also uh, he calls himself a mechanic. <laughs> mechanic being a strong word, but now we're, uh, I think we're going to take a little walk, have a little look at some of the cars. Not just Aidan's car, we've got some other cars in as well. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. Yeah, so let's go have a wee wander through and see what we've got. Um, there's a lot of toys in here, and there's some really serious toys. Let's come through. This is the main garage for the race shop. We have a, a main shop and a restoration shop. As you can see, we have three guys at a diff. Here's the main car So this car is a current. Touring car. Touring car. So today is Monday. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So in 40 years of time, this will be loaded in a lorry. It's going to first in for a race weekend, which hopefully will be quite a successful one. It's still a new car, so we're just kind of trying to develop it a bit more. When I say we, it's them. Yeah. We're we'll trying to develop it a bit more and stuff like that. So we'll be happy with mid-part results and stuff like that. But uh, this is an Infiniti Q50, uh -huh. which is a Nissan, I think. Uh -huh. Now, is this an Nissan that somebody can buy from, like, is this like a family car that's just a... So this is a four-door saloon. Uh, the, the new model's called the Q60, this is the Q50. Uh -huh. You can buy it from Infinity Glasgow until March 2022. Uh -huh. Or is it 2020? 2020. Then, it's going to be a bit more difficult to buy it because Infinity's going out in the UK. Oh. Oh, well. But you can still buy them from Nissan if you really want to desire one. Fantastic. Yeah. So, should we grab... Uh, 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 grab a touring car uh, driver and see what he's got to say. So here we have. Uh, hey, Aidan, how you doing? Nice to meet you. So we've got uh, a touring car champion, not champion, not yet. One day, <laughs> one day it's coming. So, but fan favourite at the moment. You're just crown fan favourite. Yeah, uh, apparently so. So uh, no, that's always a nice thing. Nice thing to have fans behind you. Yeah, and that's it's voted by the fans. You get like, do how many people were? Do you know it was? I think it was seventy-five thousand votes over the full competition. That's so, quite a few. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a nice thing uh, yeah. to have uh, people behind you, people supporting you and wanting you to do well. Of course, it's always a, a very nice feeling to, to spur you on. Yeah. So. Can you give us a wee, like, how, how is this car different from your previous car that you've been driving? Uh, pretty much every way, the, <laughs> all the main ways. Uh, this one's left-hand drive rather than right-hand drive. Uh, this one's a long wheelbase coupe rather than a short wheelbase uh, hatchback. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's got an overhang at over both axles, whereas the other one never. This one's rear wheel drive, the other one's front wheel drive, so we just pretty much took everything and flipped it all on its head. Yeah, so you basically made your life really, really difficult by changing absolutely <laughs> everything. Pretty much, so uh, all my race career I've never raced rear wheel drive, I've uh -huh. only been front wheel drive, so it's something that I expected to, to take a while getting used to, which I've, to be honest it suits me and I'm quite comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, the big thing is trying to set the car up. It's, yeah. um, the, a, a, a touring car, especially the British touring cars, there's so much you can do with them. Um, it's, it's, they, they work well in such a small window and trying to find that window is something that uh, teams always struggle with. Mm -hmm. um, and we are trying to do it with a, a type of car we've never ran. So the engineers, uh, I mean it is what it is, it takes a while to get used to. Mm -hmm. um, people go through a long pre-season test programme. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of laps, a lot of simulations, and we built the car in, uh, in house here in the space of eight days. Showed up to one test day and then went to straight to a race weekend. So uh, it, it's always going to take a long time. Uh -huh. We've not changed car for a short term, um, short term benefits. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were always going to be worse initially. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're doing is we know how good our team are in here as well as Laser Tools Racing, yeah. uh, working together. Uh, we proved that with the Mercedes A-Class, 
we, we came out with that. All the data showed the car was better than the other Mercedes because of the work we've done here and the work the Laser Tools Racing team done. Um, the car was the most reliable it's ever been. This is the first year we've run it on our own and it's the most reliable the car's ever, uh, has ever been when I've had it. Mm -hmm. um, every weekend we went to run faultlessly and uh, that's the first time I've experienced that. So we know we are good enough. Um, it's just we need to learn, learn how to set the car up. Yeah. Find a sweet spot, and, and what we're doing is building for the future to, yeah. to try and be at the front and hit the ground running next season. So, what do you find for yourself as the main challenge from moving from front wheel to rear wheel drive? Is there a big, like, is there a real big learning curve, or did uh, you? Yeah, every corner that's not in, I had to approach differently than uh -huh. I had before. It's the, all the technique to drive the car quickly. Uh, there's a lot of the mental things you have to think about while driving and focus on is, uh, yeah, th th just all that when it comes down to fine techniques, it's just so different to what I've learned. Um, and as well as when you're out of your comfort zone, um, you know, everything is reaction. You can learn knowing that when the car slides, you have to lift out it all and plant your foot to the, floor <laughs> and, uh, the point where you want to go. So that's it. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, a lot of things have changed, um, but it's, it's fun. I, I, it's a great thing for we're a family on team. We're doing it all in house and. Um, but it's in here as well, we all have a great relationship together. Yeah. It's like coming to work with my mates. So yeah. we've now got this project. Um, I've got to say a little project, but it's a bloody big project. <laughs> yeah. uh, that much scaffolding does not mean a little project. <laughs> no, it's, it's kind of like every thing. These cars have run before in years gone yeah. by, but we have, um, all, again, in-house stripped it back, to, um, rebuilt it from the ground up, and a lot of development work with it. It's different running gear now. It's uh, an engine that's three or four years better with developments coming each year and effectively it's like a new car again. It's, yeah. it's nothing like the car that ran before and we're having to learn it all on our own as well. We've not got a teammate where we can feed off each other mm -hmm. and kind of double the rate of progress. So yeah, it's like our project and we're, we're confident in the, in the long run. We, we know this car is going to be right. Yeah. We just need to, to keep building and uh, keep focused on the future. Yeah, brilliant. Well, good luck with the future, dude. Cheers. Thank you. See you later. See you later. All right. Touring car number one. Now that is touring car number one, but not only do we have one touring car, there's two more. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So uh, we'll, start at the, we'll start at the bottom one. So this right. is what that used to look like. Um, and the reason that it doesn't have a single panel on it at the moment is because infinity panels are so hard to get spares, and we need such a spares package to run this car. For example, we look behind you on the floor there. Those are the good ones. Those are the good ones. Don't look up there. It's fine. No, it's we're not allowed to look up there. They're all broken. Um, so this is what that car was. This is a pre-developed version of that car, um, which next year we might make it into a little track toy that we can do passenger laps in, or you never know, we might put them in touring cars itself. I hear Craig McLeod's looking for a drive. I would love that. <laughs> James, that you have to make that happen. <laughs> you give me the money, I'll make it happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> So that is the Infinity Then at the top we've got the A-Class, which is a car that we've ran for the last few years, mm -hmm. um, which has had success, race wins, all that kind of stuff. So that is a, that was a very, very good and competitive car, but unfortunately it's developed and uh, it's just not up to it anymore, which is why they've moved to the Infinity. So if you want to go on and have a little closer look. Yeah, it was like, so like that. So what? Like, there's a four-cylinder engine, isn't it? Yes, I believe. Don't quote me on this, but I believe it's based on some sort of Vauxhall engine. Okay. Um, so are all the touring car engines the same? Yeah. Okay. And then, so it doesn't matter what manufacturer, they all have that engine. Yes. Okay. You're gonna say yes. You're gonna say yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now. The, um, so these engines, sorry, are, in, are run by Toka and Swindon. Mm -hmm. We can't. Uh, we can't even change the spark plug. Uh -huh. uh, an engineer comes to the racing on behalf of the car, and then they will manage the engine so that we can't cheat, basically. Not that we would ever cheat, it's cheap as well. Bending the rules isn't. <laughs> Well, first of all, uh, you're going to say, like, this yeah. is a spec part as well, isn't it? This yeah. whole front, cr th this whole front 
sort of cross. So you can look at, this will give you a better idea. Yeah. They, they do a process called tubbing the chassis, which basically means that they give you a car back with these points on it, uh -huh. and then you attach the subframe to it. You can see this is a new one, this is an old one. You can even see the difference in the shape. Yeah. They are bolted from car to car. Uh -huh. And so this is a couple of years old, a bit out of date, but that's why we'll show you under the bonnet. <laughs> So, it's so amazing that didn't you think that all the touring cars are different manufacturers, but there's a lot of it's just been standardised. I had no concept that that was like... You have to, to, to make it fair. Yeah. It's like, even in Formula 1, you've all got different engines, but they've got to be the same size, shape, yeah. produce the same power, all that kind of thing. Um, so to try and make touring cars affordable, I use that word loosely, <laughs> um, they're standardised engine, but because they're standardised, they then have a third party company that runs them, which actually makes them not cheap anymore. Okay. It'd probably be cheaper building an engine on house. Yeah. Probably would be. Well, should we look inside? Because this is, again, it's a work of art in here. This is just insane. Like, levels of... Oh. Actually, we're going to go around the other side, because I think it might be easier to see in or some stuff. So, yeah, this is a bit easier. Look at... I don't even know where to start. I'm not... And I, you know what? I'm not going to even go and start because it's just like, well, like you, we could do an entire, oh, you do 30 minutes of video about this, but it's just insane levels of detail and welding, it, I, right, crazy, just absolutely nuts. And, and you guys work on these in-house, this is like you guys maintain these and, and make sure that these cars can go to the next race. So like somebody, you guys could wipe one of these cars out. If Aiden rolls up on a Sunday night and it arrives back here on a Tuesday morning, we tend to hurry up the customer's car as much as we can to be able to get back to that. Yeah. But yeah, so like the car will literally leave here, go to the race circuit and then only come back here. There's no middle ground. This is the home of later tool racing as mm -hmm. race more than anyone or what. Um, it's it's us. It's basically just us. It's just a few guys. It's still no million, no multi million going back and yeah. that kind of stuff. It's just us in a little shed in Livingston. Uh, you you guys, a little shed in Livingston, making and maintaining cars like this, and then you're also doing like things like this. So the Subaru that you are basically restoring and, and doing some upgrades. This has been a complete nut and bolt restoration uh, for a special customer. Let's leave it at that. Yep. Um, we complete nut and bolts. We've got the paint shed across the road that we also own. Uh, but as you can see from when they come in, no, nothing's been messed out of this. Um, it is just a toy. It's not getting a roll cage, but it has just got full rally slash rally cross suspension pops in it. It's just, yeah, look, it's, it's brand new fresh paint everywhere. It's for playing on that field. Hmm. Because, uh, yeah. Um, we could do a V180, we could show you the engine if you wanted. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's have a little, you know, over here so we have. we can pre-build engines, the customer specifically like the Cosworth build. This is... A shiny engine. So what do are you gonna give me a number? How much is that gonna make? No no not cost wise, power. Power. I'd say at least four thousand brake horsepower. We'll be happy at four thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got like Subarus, then <laughs> But just before, just before we actually move on to that one. Oh yeah, we've got some we've got some bumpers. bumpers. Yeah. This was one and back one race. Now, because of fiberglass, that's just a little love tap. It's fine. Uh, but that, that's one race, that wasn't three races, that was one race on the Sunday, and there was three races each Sunday. Um, just the stone chips breaking the fiberglass with the rubber. So these are not worth fixing. They're not worth the paint, they're not worth uh, the repair. So they just get bent or they get sold. <laughs> So if anybody wants to buy a bumper, <laughs> slightly <laughs> used, yeah, slightly used bumpers. Now, and you have to make the car look good after yeah. every race. So you have to have three of those. Uh, three of every animal. So the only thing we have one of each is the doors, because you can 
really break a door, you've done, done really well. Right. But we carry a pile of front bumpers. You can see them over there, splutters front yeah. and back. Abundance of alloy wheels because they get buckled any time you look at a car. We <laughs> <laughs> have countless first packages. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Now, uh, you also do exhaust stuff as well, and you got this cool kind of like, <laughs> right? What is this? Turn that off. There we go. That'd be good. Um, yeah. So these are things that we do in the house. Um, tips. And then this is called a vortex system. If any of your viewers know what this is. Um, so. Just for example, right now the Fiesta ST Championship in that is very limited on what you can modify, but you can modify your exhaust. And this has given drivers 10 brake more just from a muffler, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but when you've only got a 100 odd brake, a 10% increase on a small track or even a big track gives you a massive, a massive advantage. I think the top four cars in that championship are now all running these. And we've also got a few minis in the Open Championship that run these as well. But we are the only people in Scotland that do them. Basically, air goes in, you somehow get more horsepower, it uses less fuel, gives you less emissions, and magic comes out the other end. Right, let's have a look in the end, because that was quite cool. Like, I don't know, can we see? Like, basically, it looks like a jet engine in there. There's some weird cone. It's basically. Science. Yeah, the yep, we don't know how it works, Much but it does. <laughs> And we have a dyno that proves that it works. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, well, we'll get to the dyno because there's some nice things in there. Customer's car. Yeah. Painted by us. A wee bit dusty at the moment because uh, we've been waiting on the customer providing some electronic stuff. But it's now, it is actually running. Mm -hmm. So this is a Ford F1 pickup truck, I was going to call it one thing. Now, this is what this truck looked like before when it arrived here. It is, uh, can you see, there is, there's a pretty beat up truck. And now, look, it is immaculate. Look, it, it's just stunning. Now, what what have you got in, oh, let's go to the, let's go to the, yeah, 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 let's go to the thing that makes Craig happy. So, what have you got? So, that is a Trans Am big block, is that a big block Chevy? Big block V8, 5.7 litre. Um, and when it's all cleaned up, will be absolutely lovely. Yeah, this is, this is a, such a cool vehicle. Just like, just the way it sits so aggressive at the front, like it's, it's proper low for a truck. Yeah. And they call those mini trucks, or are they? Yeah, no dear. It's an American it's like, thing, but yeah, it's cool. It's the it's the uh, the wheels. They're not massive. It's that kind of just loads of t rubber on the wheel. Love that. And then, a, and then we go from massive American truck to a Peugeot 206. A Peugeot 206. However, not a normal Peugeot 206. Uh huh. I'm guessing you could probably see the paintwork. Is immaculate. It look as old and rusty as it no. is. This is a Faber and Son, a good customer of ours actually. Um, and they've done a full restoration on this. So we've done the full bodywork. Uh, we're in the process of doing the full underneath. Mm -hmm. um, so even though it has literally just passed an MT, it is getting all new suspension, shock absorber, tie rod ends, track rod ends, you name it, it's getting it. And it's like I said, a fabulous and Son thing. We're doing it up, it's got way out of hand, but all work done here, the paint done across the road, and we're doing all the mechanical stuff as well. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It is the cleanest, that is the cleanest one of those I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's probably fresher than when it came out of the factory. Yeah, literally. Probably more reliable too. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of messy corner. Uh -huh. So we've got a pipe bending machine so we can do roll cages in house, which you will see, uh, I believe, when we get to the Evo. Uh, we can custom make exhausts to go with the Vortex system, or we can do cat backs, back box deletes, uh, anything with pipe. We mm -hmm. can do. Uh, and we also have this, which really should be up at the Arbor Restoration Shop. <laughs> I don't even know what it is to you. I think it's like, isn't it like an A something or other? An Austin thing or something. I uh, can't. Maybe I'd somebody watching those and they make a comment and we could know. That it. would be amazing. Yeah, yeah somebody do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can like do total fab work and stuff in this house as well. So um, this is uh, about to rebuild this gearbox. The cogs that is for that Subaru with the Cosworth engine. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, the customer, requested a special ratio believe because he read it on a form online so he provided the gears and we will um, 
that's why it's up here. Mm -hmm. We'll be stripping that, and again, we've got all our cans and stuff like that for the exhaust work. Should have come to it. This is also our uh, alignment machine. I'll mm -hmm. just get this sales pitch in there quickly. Um, this is where we do track setup and also fast loads and stuff like that. Um, this is. We have a touring car team, so if you take your wheel ring knock hill and you want it to handle better, there's literally nobody better in the country mm -hmm. than what we do. And we post that and we're quite happy with that. Nobody's argued with us since, and our customers have all, never complained, so that's what we do, all of this stuff. But we'll take a little walk around. This is the dino room, which is currently not the dino room. It's currently a store room, so next week we're going to have our dino room. But come on in. It's a big red car. It is a big red car. That is uh, a Ferrari. <laughs> I'm going to say 458 Spider. It's got F430 on it. What is that? Is it probably. Yeah, it probably means that. Um, yeah, so this is one of uh, the advert cars for us. Uh, it is. It doesn't actually get used as much as it should do. Um, and it's going to be getting moved up to one of our other facilities. But for now, it is in the open kind of area of the way. We only have to move it once a week or so, depending on what the dining room is. Uh, we'll get to the evil. Well, it's raining. It's lovely and raining. Our dino room, we have a massive fan built into the wall there. Mm -hmm. And a massive suction at the top of the roof there. Uh, which, I don't know if you've been in much dino, dino rooms, but I'd like to think this is one of the cleaner ones. <laughs> this is cleaner than my living room. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be cleaner if I never had this. <laughs> you can't call Ferraris in Time Attack Evo's mess. And two and cars flutter in graphics. Yeah, it's all those things. Hey, what, what engine is in this, by the way? I have no idea. One, two, three, four. See, my natural aspect would be V8 or V10, but I know it's loud. Really loud. Not that much. So, what, uh, we've got a dyno here. Yep. Try, not, try not to fall over on the <laughs> dyno. Um, uh, so, you got a rear wheel drive dyno set up? Yep. Well, front or rear. Front or rear, yeah. obviously, yeah, good yeah, point. Drive dyno set up. We've got, we're doing dyno days and stuff like that for clubs and whatever. Mm -hmm. but, um, Yeah. But we will be trying to push it a bit more in talks with mappers and stuff like that to make, make better for use of the facilities. But until now, it's just storing ridiculously expensive Evos. So, this Evo is a time attack car, or going to be. Going to be. Going to be. And you guys have done all the work in house, is that a. Yeah, so uh, George, our master tech, basically, the customer came from up north to George, uh, he wanted. A few hundred break, George took it, made it a few hundred break, customer gave it back to George and went, uh, all the toys. So um, we're currently waiting on a uh, third party wiring company, third party wiring expert joining us, but all the fabrication was done by our guys. Jeez, oh, where is it? Just like, there is. Is there any evil left? Apart from the metal, there, there's maybe some metal in the dash, but. It's got the original fuel cap. Tell you that. It's just like oh, it's nuts. So more. No, oh, we got PMC here. Is that? And then that's just crazy amounts of stuff. I don't even know what all this stuff is. Okay. Motec dash. Right, it can go that. Look, I can read. Sparkle steering wheel. <laughs> Right, back seat. Hey, so got air shocks and air rams even for uh, lifting it. So, yeah. And oh, so where will where will that compete? What's the plan um, for that? So I believe it's up to the customer, but I believe uh, as a time attack car, you've got to imagine it's going to do some SLS. Uh -huh. uh, I think SLS is actually bigger than time attack, um, and it'll do some. I think it's just more like a toy. To be yeah. totally honest, um, it's better than my toys. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, my toy's broken at the moment. I can show you something that'll make you feel small if you want. <laughs> I think most of the things in here have done that. Oh, this is just look like just look at the size of that. It's fucking dumb, Bob. That's just nuts. There's that's I think I've had turbos that same were the same the size as that, and then that is a huge. What actually? What turbo is that? Do we know? Honestly, don't. Nothing written on it. There's a fucking huge one. 
And then the size, even just the size of the pipe in. Yeah. It's just it's just nuts. And um, massive inlet platinum. Oh vibrance performance clamps. Got all the toys. This is a lovely thing. And then look at remote reservoirs for the shocks. Yeah. That's super cool. Build it, build it, build it. Yeah. Yeah. So clean as well. Obviously it's not as it's been used, but yeah, it is nuts. Absolutely nuts. Well, I think besides a pile of bumpers and some old outdated subframes. Yeah, and some pretty cool splitters though as well. There's uh, and some yeah. The guys are working on that at the moment just to get a few more ponies or reliability or cold air. Cold air. Well did. Pleasure. Thanks very much for showing us around and yeah I'll be looking forward to that uh, riding that uh